Direwolf, a name which translates to terrible wolf. With a bite force that was a whopping 129% more than the modern day grey wolf. He roamed our lands 250,000 years ago, right up to approximately 10,000 years ago, when they mysteriously disappeared. Today, Animal Watch will investigate the terrible wolf's physiology and find out if he was such a terrible wolf. Did he have a terrifying presence, hunting capability? And what would he have looked like to a human up close and to our modern day wolves that we know and love? And I will reveal one surprising fact about him that you might not know. Don't go away. With a huge size and a whopping bite force, this ancient wolf appears undefeatable to everything, don't they? Except they died out and went extinct 10,000 years ago. So why was that? Today, Animal Watch will investigate these amazing wolves that once roamed our lands and see how they compare to the wolves and dogs we know today. Forget the Game of Thrones fictional direwolves. Today, we bring you the real direwolf. Firstly, what exactly is a direwolf? The direwolf is an immense wolf-like creature that roamed mainly Northern America 250,000 years ago, right up to 10,000 years ago. When paleontologists first discovered his skeleton, they saw the similarities he had to our modern day grey wolf and immediately drew the conclusion that he was a wolf, but a much larger and more powerful ancestor. In fact, so powerful, his scientific name means terrible wolf. So let's compare him to the grey wolf and see if he is such a big and powerful wolf compared to him. Modern day grey wolves vary in size with the largest wolves residing in the northwest of Alaska. These wolves can stand up to 80 centimetres at the shoulder and are taller than other wolves all over the rest of the world due to evolution sizing them up so they can hunt larger prey and have longer legs to cut through the snow. Game of Thrones has depicted their own fantasy direwolves as towering over human beings. Well, this isn't true. The true direwolves stood the same height as our current tallest wolves. So yes, they were tall, but not towering over our grey wolves or a fully grown man. So let's dispel that myth. So why are they described as being so huge? Well, perhaps it was their bone mass that really gave them that presence. Our modern day grey wolf weighs in at a maximum of 175 pounds, which is 80 kilograms, with the largest ever being recorded from central Alaska. Now, this was the largest ever recorded in history. Most other grey wolves weigh in at around 143 pounds, which is 65 kilograms. The dire wolf would have weighed around 150 pounds, some say more, maybe even 175 pounds. So he definitely has the weight advantage on our grey wolf, but not a lot, to be honest. Not like the movies suggest. He's just as big as the biggest of all our grey wolves we have today in Northwest Alaska. He was, however, thicker set. His feet were larger, with a notable splay enough to carry his heavier frame. The direwolf's head is most significantly unique in that it was much broader, larger and heavier than the typical grey wolf. An interesting fact is that despite this increase in skull size, the direwolf shows a smaller brain cavity than the grey wolf. The direwolf's length from head to tail was around 5 to 6 feet. His body length is 15 centimetres longer than a grey wolf. So 15 centimetres doesn't seem much of a difference, but with a thicker bone mass and just a little bit taller and a little bit longer can make such a difference. Ocean here isn't that much taller and longer than my husky cow, but in real life, she looks a good third bigger. So all these small differences would have given the impression of being much larger, thicker and powerful than our dainty, fast grey wolf. Also, the direwolf's canines were one third longer than the grey wolf's, 
which would look a lot longer if you saw them in real life, as the grey wolf has very long canines compared to our domesticated dogs. They were also sharper and more flexible than our grey wolf. His skull length was almost five centimetres longer than the grey wolf. His jaw was much larger too, giving him additional crushing strength, just like a <laughs> hyena does. So let's talk bite force. Now scientists estimate that our dire wolf had a huge 129% stronger bite than the grey wolf. We already know that our modern day grey wolf has a bite strength so much more powerful than any dog breed. So imagine a wolf that's bite even outdoes our modern day grey wolf and all other mastiff dog breeds the world over. This power comes down to the design of his skull and how this affected his jaw muscles. The skull of the dire wolf could extend up to 12 inches or more, showcasing a broader palette, frontal region, and a zygomatic arches in contrast to the largest modern day Yukon wolf. This morphological arrangement contributed to the dire wolf's massive skull. The skull's sagittal crest, indicative of powerful jaw muscles, was higher and its rear nasal bone ends extended remarkably further back into the skull. So what did they eat? Because of the strength and bite force, the dire wolf was able to hunt larger, more powerful prey. They probably traveled in packs, hunting down bison, ancient horses, ground sloths, camels, and perhaps even small mammoths and mastodons. Many followed their prey into the sticky asphalt of what are now Los Angeles La Brea tar pits, where they were trapped for the ages. Hundreds of dire wolf skulls line the walls of the California Museum. So now I'm gonna tell you something which might disappoint you. Our big and powerful dire wolf isn't in fact a wolf at all. Yes, I'm sorry to tell you this, but he isn't. A bit like our maned wolf not actually being a wolf too, but still looking like one. The ancient dire wolves that once hunted in the prehistoric world weren't wolves at all. In fact, their genetic lineage is so different from modern species like grey wolves, Canis lupus, and coyotes, Canis latrans, that they should be considered a separate lineage of canines, researchers found. The scientists combed through old museum fossils to find surviving genetic material and ended up working with the DNA of five animals that lived between 13,000 and 50,000 years ago. The genetic information revealed that dire wolves were from a lineage that separated from wolves, coyotes and dogs about six million years ago. Dire wolves were long thought to be close cousins of grey wolves. Now this analysis of dire wolf DNA finds they are instead so different from other wolves, coyotes and dogs that they don't belong in the genus that includes these animals. Instead, researchers argue they need an entirely new scientific classification. The genetic material revealed a new evolutionary family tree and a surprise. Dire wolves occupy their own lineage, separate from those that gave rise to African jackals, grey wolves, coyotes and dogs by nearly six million years. Even though they look like wolves, dire wolves actually have nothing to do with wolves. So our dire wolf's name was reclassified to Anisium dirus from Canis dirus. The parents. Due to them not being wolves at all, perhaps we need to reimagine what dire wolves look like. Game of Thrones creators have often depicted the predators as large timber wolves, bulky, grey and ferocious. But living in the warmer latitudes of North America may have given the dire wolves traits more common to canids and other animals in these climates, such as red fur, a bushy tail and more rounded ears. Dire wolves may have resembled a giant reddish coyote. Also, there were two distinct subspecies of dire wolf, one that originated from California and Mexico that exhibited shorter limbs and longer teeth and another which lived east of the North American Continental Divide that exhibited longer limbs and shorter teeth. Why did they go extinct? 
As to why the wolves disappeared, scientists only know that they vanished along with other big Ice Age creatures around 12,000 years ago. Climate change may have killed off the large prey dire wolves depended on, and maybe the reason grey wolves and coyotes survived was because they could stalk smaller animals, as they were more athletic, faster and finer boned. Human hunting of dire wolf prey may have also played a role, as it's likely the wolves occupied North America with early Native Americans for thousands of years. Closer to their extinction period around 12,000 BC, scientists noticed that the dire wolf became smaller in size, which correlated with climate fluctuations. A study compared dire wolf craniodental morphology from four Labria pits. The results are evidence of a change in dire wolf's size, dental wear and breakage, skull shape and snout shape across time. Dire wolf body size has decreased which was evidence of food stress from food scarcity, leading to lower nutrition intake. This was seen in smaller body size, skulls with a larger cranial base and a shorter snout. So there you have it, our spectacular dire wolf wasn't even a wolf at all. However, I think it'd look pretty amazing if we were to see one alive today. And if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, then be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And tune in every week, we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. So it's bye from me and bye from my own dire wolf, Ocean. See you next week.